Now is the time in our service when we celebrate the Lord's table, when we remind ourselves from God's word of what Christ accomplished on the cross. If you don't have a copy of God's word with you, please raise your hand and one of these men coming up the aisles will bring one to you. Uh, Just raise up your hand, I'll get one to you. If you don't own a Bible, please feel free to keep this one that they're handing out to you. Uh, We're going to be in the book of 1 Peter, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 through 25. If you have one of our guest Bibles, it's page 181 toward the back, 1 Peter 2, 21 through 25. Please follow along with me as I read 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 through 25. For you have been called to this purpose, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps, who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. And while being reviled, he did not revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds, you were healed. For you were continually straying like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. Peter was writing to a church that was well acquainted with suffering And he reminded them that Christ's suffering gives believers an example of how to suffer unjustly. Christ's example of suffering should inform our suffering. In verse 22 of this passage, Peter reminds us that in his suffering, Christ committed no sin, no deceit was found in his mouth. Jesus, the God-man, suffered as one who deserved no such thing. He did not deserve any suffering He was entirely perfect, and yet he suffered. And in his perfection, while suffering, in verse 23 here, he did not revile in return. He uttered no threats. In contrast here, he kept entrusting himself to the righteous judge. This was holy suffering, and this is God's example to us as we suffer. But what Jesus accomplished was also so much more than merely an example. His suffering accomplished something for believers. Verse 24, it says that he bore our sins in his body on the cross. He suffered for our sins. He died, the perfect son of God, for our misdeeds. As we see at the end of verse 24, his wounds for our healing. If you are a believer, then verse 25 says, you were continually straying, but you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. Jesus suffered selflessly for us, trusting in the Father. And in his death, he took upon himself the sins of all who would believe. And if you believe, he took upon himself your sins. He covered us with his righteousness so that we would be acceptable to the righteous judge. We've not lived righteous lives as Christ did, and God judges righteously. And yet, we are accepted because we have been clothed with the righteousness of Christ. And in in verse 24, it says that we died to sin, we lived to righteousness. Praise God for his gracious gift of salvation, what we remember at the Lord's table. This morning, as you hold the cracker and the cup of juice, I want you to contemplate Christ's selfless sacrifice given to sinners like you, like me, who who didn't deserve it in any way. We didn't earn it. Consider your fight against sin. He, He bore our sins on his body so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness, the passage says. And if you're with us and you have not believed in Christ, we're happy to have you here. We are really grateful you are here. But we must implore you to believe, to turn to Christ. Turn from sin, turn to Christ as your Lord, and 
and trust in him and what he accomplished on the cross. If you will not believe, then I encourage you to take this time to think about where you are placing your hope for salvation, what hope you do have or really don't have. Consider what Christ accomplished. Uh, If you don't believe, we ask that you do not take the cracker or the juice, as this is a time for those who do believe to solemnly proclaim and remember Christ and what he did for us on the cross. If you do believe, then use this time to consider what Christ accomplished for you that you did not deserve in any way. Your salvation is entirely due to his selfless sacrifice on the cross. Consider your life and confess any known sin to him. Commit to turning from it and as one who has died to sin, to live to righteousness, as the text says. Please take communion as your hearts are prepared. Men, please serve us.